Hey guys, Savage here. Joy here with Real Progressives. Um, tonight I am joined again by someone that our audience absolutely adores, uh, Mr. Pat Cody. Um, he is also known as Pat the Burner and uh, Peter Douche on Facebook. So thank you so much for coming back, Pat. Thanks for having me again, Joy. Hopefully Absolutely. we don't have the, uh, the tech bugs again, the deep state yeah. messing with us. Oh my God. <laughs> if you, I know some of you guys are, are anxious for this because last time it was just a total clusterfuck. It was Russia just like, you know, digging into the show like every 30 seconds. I think we tapped out at 18, uh, 18 times that it cut us off. So you know what to do, just in case, Pat. I'm ready for it. <laughs> so what, you know, there's so much going on on Twitter. I joined Twitter two weeks ago, and I'm kind of like understanding why I waited so long, because people are kind of ugly on there, even more so than Facebook. Um, so you seem to take everything in just like, you know, a humorous way. Um, so what is it like when you see these, these posts? I know you have the, the Peter Douche parody account um, mm -hmm. to kind of, you know, be sardonic and what have you. But as, as Pat the Burner, how do you react to like so much just crap about, you know, pushing Beto and Kamala and all these yeah. new libs? Well, you know, having been there, I, I joined Twitter around the primaries and I got I joined to get away from Facebook so that I didn't have to get in the same fights with family and friends. I'd rather get in those fights with strangers, um, which is perfect place on Twitter because it's just an anonymous mess of people that all hate the other side. Mm -hmm. um, occasionally you'll find a real debate on there, but it's, it's so hard to come by. Um, but anyway, so having been there for a while, it's really easy to recognize the gaslighting and who's being propped up and where real enthusiasm is versus, you know, the think tanks and consultant groups that work for these campaigns or they have all their bots out there spinning their, their side of the argument, which is, you know, what's Beto's argument for being president that he lost to Ted Cruz that he, I, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, he rides a skateboard. He's cool. He rides a skateboard. He's he's a, a young white Obama, apparently. Which, which is, is means just a, he'll bomb seven more countries, I right. guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And so, I mean, if you have to look at his support and think, well, what would make someone be so enthusiastically support, in support of, of Beto online? I mean, if, if it was a progressive thing and that's a grassroots movement of people behind him, they would have policy positions they're speaking about and they don't have a single one. Electability nope. is the only thing they have and their electability argument is based on losing to Ted Cruz. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know, it's interesting. See, John, I don't find him handsome. I don't, I don't, I don't see it. I'm he right here, Joy. What's that? <laughs> yeah, I know you're talking about Beto. Yeah. I can't read the right. comments. <laughs> I, you're fucking hot. You know that. No, <laughs> no, Beto does not make my calves cramp. Sorry, guys. I don't see yeah. it. Um, usually I dig guys with guitars, but not feeling it with him. Um, but you know, the interesting thing is with him. If you ask anyone outside of Texas who's ever heard of him before 2018, no. Yeah. And the but he's been in office for years, but nobody's heard of him. Why? Because he votes Republican. Yeah. But that's and, attacking him to call him out on that. Right. And you saw that uh David Sirota posted a lot of information just about his, you know, his uh, his campaign donations and who he's been funded by and and, you know, he took the no fossil fuel money pledge and broke the pledge. They had to, to remove his name and say he'd, ha he'd have to retry to earn the, you know, the certificate or whatever. I don't know what they actually give them, but he, he can't claim that he's, he's in compliance with the no fossil fuel money pledge. And so basically, yeah. basically, he's a blue dog Democrat. 
being spun as this grassroots progressive champion. That's like Joe, you know, Manchin suddenly being a hero of the grassroots people or something. Yep, absolutely. It's also interesting because, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted by the comments because they're pretty funny. Um, but he the, he was asked, are you a progressive? And he's like, I don't really, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't like labels. <laughs> right. <laughs> sure. Okay, well, the root word of progressive is progress. So if you're not a progressive, you're a regressive and get the fuck out of the way. It's that simple. People do not want to listen to any kind of reason on social media. Um, I've found that there are very seldom people who will, um, you know, actually say, whoa, I didn't know that. Hold on. Let me look it up. That's kind of rare. A lot of times it's like you're racist, you're sexist. You know what I mean? It's that um, right. Bernie has five homes. He drives a Lamborghini, you know, a just like coat, a socialist, socialist with the warm coat, the tragedy. Yes. How dare his son buy him a clearance coat? Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> Who works at the factory that makes the, the yeah, Burlington coat factory. Exactly. Exactly. When in actuality, Bernard would be the, the first non millionaire president in decades. So, yeah. as much as they try, people are seriously obsessed with this tax shit. Trump, show your taxes. Bernie, show your taxes. He did show his freaking taxes and it was unimpressive. Dude literally works for the Senate. How much money do you think he has? Like, it's crazy. People focus on stuff that's so insignificant. Um, but yes, uh, and uh, the Kamala worship as well. Um, I've been trying to educate people on her for prison, uh, for profit prison history um, yeah. and what she's done to people of color. And so many people of color don't know about this. And they're like, wait, what do you mean? And I have to provide links and stuff. And it sucks so bad because I'm like, we have to educate people on, you know, voting against their against their best interest. Um, what do you find is is the the hardest thing about Kamala? I mean, she's got the she's got the mainstream media behind her. Like I was watching MSNBC the other day, and despite all polling, there's no polling that has Kamala Harris ahead. But they had a whole panel panel of people on, and um, I think one of them worked for Third Way, but a bunch of think tank people all propped up, you know, they're there to prop up their candidates. But this panel is having a real conversation about her being the front runner. And and she's not, <laughs> you know, yeah. California doesn't really like her. I mean, they don't hate her. California they don't know much about her, not. but, but she's not, she's not the front runner. They've been trying to make her a thing for two years now and it hasn't worked. Um, I, I want to answer um, a gentleman's comment, David Hathaway. Um, he said, if it came down to a choice between Beto and Trump in 2020, who would you choose? In that case, Beto would be a no-brainer, right? Um, well, first, my response would be, um, there's a bajillion other people in the race, so I'm not going to jump that far. But even if we did fast forward, I can tell you the way that I stand strong in my beliefs. I will never vote for someone who takes corporate money, and I will never vote for someone who does not support Medicare for all. That's it, period. I don't care who it is. They will not get my vote. Right, period. and and there are real people asking that question, like I forget what the name of the guy you just said, but um, – Real people are asking that question, but online it's being used to sort of force your hand and already make the argument that you're not supporting the Democrat. It's yes. it's to get you to pick someone not named Bernie. You know, yes. it's it's gaslighting already. And it's absolutely to say right now, before we're we're months away from the primaries even unofficially starting. And 
we're already being gaslit to not support Bernie. Like, well, if we screw Bernie, you better support our guy or woman. But it, it's a silly argument to have now to me. I mean, we need the debates. We need to see who's there. And I'm a no on probably all of them, but Bernie. What's that? I'm a no on probably all of them except for Bernie. I mean, I, I can't see, you know, I can't see someone right now that I could trust. You know, it's all about trust and and nobody is trustworthy that's viable other than Bernie. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the reason why these centrist neolib assholes keep coming out and announcing is because so many people settle. They say vote blue no matter who. And with that, why would people change? You're telling them straight up, look, you don't have to give people insurance. You don't have to do a Green New Deal. You don't have to stop taking corporate money. You don't have to stop cheating. You have our votes regardless. Why would they change? It's time during you know the primaries and stuff that we the people stand up and say, dude, look, you're not getting our vote unless, but right. people don't. That's the thing that many of us do, but all too many don't. And you know, even if, Look, when the primaries are over, you can make you can have the argument about coming home to the shitty candidate, but you shouldn't be, you know, there's no reason to not fight for our guy now as hard as possible. So all Absolutely. that is just a silly, I won't entertain that conversation online. It's just a waste of time. Absolutely. Jabari, I am burning turn 100%. I would love Miss Nina as vp what about you pat who is your uh ideal yeah um ideal would be nina i've gone back and forth between tulsi and nina but um either one of those pairings is perfect for me i mean i could i could tolerate warren as a vp um <laughs> yeah not i'm not a fan but but bernie is more of a pragmatic kind of guy and he's probably going to pick someone that has progressive credentials but also someone that guarantees he beats trump so yeah. it, it may not be somebody that we love and we're going to vote for him because it's bernie so do you think just... he could win with warren i don't well personally i think and i'm i'm not in the mainstream on this this line of thinking but i think any even a shitty democrat is going to beat trump i i don't I don't, if you look at all the, the factors that were in play, in place in 2016, they've all gotten worse for him. And there isn't a Democrat on the left, no matter how horrible they are, that is anywhere near as unfavorable as Hillary will be. You can't even create them in, in the next two years. So I don't really think a Democrat's going to lose, but that's more of a reason not to just get a shitty Democrat in there. I mean, that's more of a reason we need to fight hard now to get our guy in there. I think the the thing is, will people vote against Trump? Of course. But I think it, it could be very comparable to how it was in 2016, as in not a lot of people are going to vote. Um, You know, you, you run like Warren against Trump. I... I don't see people getting off their ass to, except for the vote for vagina, like regardless. I don't really see, I mean, I can't stand that woman, so help me. Um, but I mean, I will support Bernard no matter who, you know, he picks, but if he picked Warren, I would be pretty fucking heartbroken. I would, I really yeah. would. And I really hope that doesn't happen. I mean, we all do. I just can see a point where his pragmatism about winning the election if 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 he was convinced it was necessary and made it made him more of a lock to to beat trump i think he would pick almost any vp um but he has to be careful about about creating someone that's going to take over the progressive movement that can be trusted and that's not warren i mean she's already no. failed she's already failed the trust and loyalty test i mean that's for sure that is for sure. Um, I see Roe being mentioned. I just interviewed Congressman Ro Khanna for the third time. He stated that he is going to stay where he is. <laughs> so 
it kind of bummed me out because I adore him. I absolutely love Ro. Um, and as well as he works with Bernard, like that would be just freaking awesome. Um, right. But he's young. So for now he is where he is, but I'm hoping in the, in the future. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I feel like in my gut and I've spoken to people, you know, it, it, from the campaign prior, I, I feel like in my gut, Bernard would pick a woman, which right. woman Tulsi or Nina likely, but a woman period. Yeah. I really, cause that's just him. I don't know. Like he, I just well, can't see him picking a guy. I can't. Right. And I mean, you know, he's not beyond rational thoughts for demographics and, and what it takes to win elections. He's not, you know, he's not a purist that he's not the purist he's made out to be. He wants to win. He knows it's important to win. And there's no denying that a woman on the ticket against a, uh, you know, a scumbag like Trump is is going to be a boom. So, yeah. And it's, you know, so many people want a chillery, but the, the problem with that is she would be a horrible person to be the first woman president. Like if we're going to have a woman president, let's at least make the first one really good. So the other ones who run in the future don't have to pay the price of, you know, the the skeletons from the one prior um so same with vp i think um yeah jabari who's a teammate he said that um tulsi nina or barbara lee i've heard people uh throw barbara lee in there as well you're in california yeah. what do you what do you think about barbara lee i mean not much honestly i don't i don't have a deep history of understanding on her i mean um yeah i'll have to defer on that one but i mean it's, <laughs> he, you know I, she's older so it it's one of those i mean she's got a progressive history and 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 she checks the box in that level um but the biggest attacks on bernie in 2020 will be ageist so that That's almost that thing. almost takes her out of the running for that because you want to be able to point to your vp and say Look, if something happens to me. Exactly. You know, so, I mean, and not that she's so old, you should worry about her on any level, but it just the optics of it with them portraying him all campaign as an old person. It makes more sense for him to go with someone like Nina or Tulsi. I agree. Tulsi is 37. It's the first time she can run for president. So, I mean, OK, so here's here's the thing. Tulsi is totally going to run like she totally yeah. is. Now, is that not going to divide our vote? Yeah, I mean, I, the way I look at it is it's good to have a few people that are progressive on stage for the debates. I mean, you've got to if they're not very, you know, Tulsi doesn't realistically think she can win it. I don't I don't think I think her plan I is hope to not. I think her plan is to back out and support Bernie. I think that's what most progressives are going to do. I'm hoping so. Right. But so having her on the stage, making the same arguments as Bernie and, um, and then throwing her support towards Bernie. I mean, the, the key thing is going to be getting out of the race when it counts, you know, you definitely don't want, you know, you don't want someone taking a lot of votes because super Tuesday, California votes early this time. So, yes. you know, whoever wins California is going to be off and running to win this thing. And, and that's why they've been trying to make Kamala Harris thing for so long, because it's her state and they thought they could actually make her popular. But so many Californians hate Kamala. <laughs> yeah. That's irony. Um, and to anyone watching, I am looking for two people of color who live in California who'd be willing to come on and discuss um, the uh, the things she's done as far as uh, for-profit prison. Um, and um, uh, people talk about, you know, the arrest rates, how those went up, um, things like that. Anyone who lives in California, 
um, who can kind of discuss the things that, that they see living in that state. Um, I definitely appreciate it. That's something that I would um, definitely be interested in and that others have, have suggested I do a, a show on as well. Um, yes, Sunday, this is uh, Pat the Burner slash uh, douche, <laughs> Peter Douche. Um, so as as far as Biden, why? <laughs> there's like Bye, Biden. So much, yes. There's so much to hate about this dude. He lost twice before, first of all. Right. Well, what people don't, you know, they don't realize he hasn't run for president in a long time, right? And the younger generation and, and people that just haven't really followed this that closely may not remember, but he's a gaffe factory. That sure guy is. says something stupid to the press every day. Yeah. And he's he's already, he's insulting millennials every other day now in one way or another. Yep. He's the lift yourself up by your bootstraps kind of guy. Mm -hmm. And that message just does not sell now. I mean, and that's, we haven't even gotten to his policy. We're just talking tone. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I posted an article the other day um, about, uh, he was making fun of people who were joining in the, the civil rights fight um, and saying, I don't look good in tie dye. That's how you feel about, you know, it's just like. <laughs> right. And you, you want to you know, you have to recognize the time you're in and, you know, things are, are, you know, 20 years ago, everything you did didn't get turned into a clip and memed online and sound turned into sound bites. And, you know, those awkward videos of him, like reaching in to kiss the little girl on stage and, you know, smelling people's hair, or, you know, he's not really, but it, they just look bad. They're, they're bad optics. And, you know, when you have that paired with his history with Anita Hill and how he smeared her, I mean, the, the idea that he's going to win this election is just ridiculous. He, he's not, he's, he's going to get pummeled and he's going to be one of the few people on stage at the debates, not pretending they're Bernie. So he's right. going to run, he's going to run on centrism, which is already rejected. Yeah, it's it, that's an interesting point because everyone else is going to pretend to be progressive, but he's like not even going to pretend. <laughs> he's just like, dude, I'm totally a Republican. It's okay. Right. <laughs> We're just going to put him at odds with the other 25 people running. I mean, it, it's a he's going to be in a bad position. Yeah, and that's why I think Obama is trying to get him to run with um, Beto. With uh, Beto, because he's probably like, oh, you can get some excitement with him. And it's like, okay, here's the difference. Bernie has had excitement for decades, and Beto has had excitement for a primary in one state. So, right. I mean... Well and if you look back, remember when there was that brief period where, where Biden was trying to jump into the argument and, and have these little spats with Trump about fighting him behind the, the bleachers. Yep. And who, who took the worst of that? Biden. Biden was the one that looked the worst out of it because Trump is the guy who does those. He says those stupid things. Exactly. Like coming from our dignified Democrat. It, it was terrible. Exactly. He's like, I want to kick his ass behind the bleachers or some stupid crap. And I was like, right. whoa, like, wait, but he's a Democrat. It's OK. Totally cool. Right. Well, and then the other thing on top of that is they are going to go after Bernie for age. And so by default, that's going to attack. That's going to hurt his stock every time they do it. So Biden, the Biden is just he's dead on arrival to me. I hope so. I there are some people who once I thought he was DOA, but then once they started floating the whole like Biden Beto thing, now people are like, Ugh. it's like, dude, he's one year different than Bernie. Okay, and like stop with the the ages bullshit. Um, Andy, <laughs> that is fucking amazing. Um, a gentleman named or I'm sorry, I can't. 
I'm assuming a gentleman um, named Andy Kennedy. Biden is the old man who keeps the little kids baseball when it lands in the field. That's amazing. That pretty much I could sums totally up. see that. I could totally see that. Right. He's kind of what they portray Bernie as, but Bernie's the guy who throws it back and is totally cool about it. You know, that's exactly what Mark just said. <laughs> Bernie's oh. the, the one who the neighbor who throws it back. Exactly. Um, I think also um, the the interesting thing is about um, where they live as well, because um, do you know who Sama Hernandez is? Yeah, in Texas, who ran against uh, Beto. Yeah. Right. Well, I interviewed her during the primaries. And, you know, this was before many people really knew who who he was. And he just, his people just really jacked up her campaign. Like, he was totally, like, Shillery 2.0. Um, so I'm going to have her back on to explain, look, this is how dirty he gets. But... Again, even though you're stating facts, you're attacking. Um, do you are you on uh, Bernard's um, email list? Uh, I think so. I get a lot of well, I get our revolution stuff and, and things. Because he sent out an email today, and it really, really bummed me out. I know it wasn't supposed to, because a lot of people got hype from it, and because it's totally implying he's running, but. The, oh, the wording I did read of it. What's yes, that? I did read the email. I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, like the wording really, really, really implies he's running, which makes me happy. But at the same time, it was very like, you know, they started that that new CTR group, Third Way. It sounds right. like it's um like a, a cult like that name <laughs> or like they're a third party support group, which is funny in itself. Um, but yeah, he said they're already, start, you know, sending attack dogs on him and he hasn't even announced yet. So for anyone watching, I know I'm seeing a lot of burners here and a lot of comments, Bernie 2020, any of you guys who support him and want him to run, Please send him even a dollar tonight uh, because he's asked that those who would like him to run and, and those who would support his campaign would donate. And the the point would be to get the most people to donate, not necessarily the most money, but we want him to know that X amount of people donated um, so that many people want him to run. Um, so even if it's only a buck, who cares? Donate it so he knows. We have his back. We want him. Like, he needs to get his ass in the race. Um, so I kind of, after interviewing like a hundred, over a hundred candidates, I've come to the conclusion that even if somebody I really love loses, it's still kind of um, beneficial because they end up pushing people more to the left. Do you think that would be the case with with Bernie? You mean if he lost the primary? Right. Or, Do you think he would still kind of have, you know, the, the same, well, uh, that so, effect that we could just, yeah, you know, I mean, at least open more, more candidates up to being progressive. Right. And I mean, to me, it's unquestionable that he does have that power. I mean, he's, he lost and he's pushed his whole platform on the democratic party. Now, granted, they don't support it, but it's their platform. <laughs> so just the, the power of the bully pulpit has already been tremendous. I mean, he, he knows how to, get to, to gather support for issues and, and how to push people. Um, the one thing I don't like, though, is that, that that's also one argument that people are making publicly to try to, to convince Bernie he can be more powerful on the outside. And that's just nonsense. He can't be more powerful on the outside. He can still be powerful. Um, but, you know, he needs to run and he needs to hold the presidency. He needs to hold office. And and we need to get him some progressives into the House and the Senate. 
Yeah, it's, um, oh, uh, Phil, you can actually just go to berniesanders.com. Um, and, uh, there's a link that says, um, donate. Um, but yeah, definitely sign up for the emails as well. But yeah, I totally agree, Pat. This is, it's going to be, um, an exercise in futility with like all these different people. And yes, Mark, my screen is split. I don't know why, but I only have two hands. I swear. It looks, see? Right. <laughs> Trippy. Um, but yeah, so what about when people, one of the things we hear all the time, probably second to his age, is uh, but he's not even a Democrat. What's your response well, to that? <laughs> I mean, obviously, that's, to someone looking at this objectively, that's a positive. I mean, there are more independents than there are Democrats and Republicans now. I mean, you know, the, the downside is you need to win the Democratic primary, and the primaries are not all open, so a lot of these independents can't come out and vote. Um, but when you get to a general election, that's why he always polled miles ahead of Hillary and all the other candidates against Trump. I mean, yeah. independents are the biggest voting bloc and millennials. Those two are going to determine the election. Absolutely. And, and nobody cares. Look, especially millennials now. Millennials, they identify more with socialism. They're for Medicare for all. They don't identify as Democrats as much as, as the last generation. And... You know, it, it's down to issues, not teams. And the Democratic Party still wants to make it about teams. And that's that's why they launched this argument that he's not a Dem. You know. Right. And it did when we were growing up, it was always more like that was just a label you had on your voter registration card. That wasn't you. Like that they make it so it's like it is their entire life that label is everything to them and it's a club that you cannot join without their express permission well i mean who brands themselves as any blue will do like that's literally you know online the other day there was a, a big long debate and the uh centrist actually made the argument that well oh these these Bernie people want to focus on policy. Like that was a bad thing. Like policy is now something we shouldn't even get into, you know, like, I mean, they're, they're pulling out all the stops, <laughs> every argument they can launch that makes no sense. They're going to launch and we're going to hear it this year, next year. Yeah. That's, that's something. And I'm not just saying this as a Bernie supporter, but something you'll see constantly is Bernie supporters are always talking about policy. They're always talking about history and facts and the way people voted, whereas they're always talking about age and, you know, um, wagging age fingers. And electability and personality issues and cult issues. Right. It's because they can't win on the merits for the argument. The people are behind Bernie's platform 100%. I mean... There, there aren't people, uh, what is the centrist platform? I mean, what, you know, it, you have these conversations with these people online about Beto and name me one thing that Beto is sports and is part of his position and policy. You know, why are you supporting Beto? Because he can win because he's young, he's inspiring. It's, it's just words and stuff. It's not actual policy. They don't know any of his voting record. Yeah, but Hillary could win too, right? That's how that worked out. And that's, that's what's just astounding is that it's the same arguments all over again. And it is, you know. And the vote shaming has begun even though people haven't even announced. All right. <laughs> and, the thing is, we, well, Joe Biden did, did come out and um, kind of echo what you were saying. He did say, I think anyone, you know, could beat Trump. And so I retweeted at him, well, I guess we don't need to vote for you then. Right. Because, <laughs> I mean, I, 
You really think he's going to get knocked out soon? I just don't. Oh, no, no. I don't think Biden's going to get knocked out soon, but I don't think he has enough support. I mean, who? It's the whole Beto latching on thing. That That's. Yeah, that's uh, his only hope. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The but only he, other he, thing I can think so, of is that Beto wouldn't be announced like right away because they always um, wait a few months. I think if Chelsea drops and says, I'm going to drop and save my, you know, give my support to Senator Sanders, then Bernie should announce right there on the stage. I would like to offer you the VP position and we will fucking crush Trump like right there we will crush right. him because remember when back um in 2016 um remember when uh Bernie was on a late show I want to say it was Jimmy Kimmel and he asked if Bernie would debate Trump and Bernie was like yes yes I right. totally will and Trump agreed and then he was out and then backed out yeah yeah that was that it would be worth him winning the primary in itself just to watch that debate. I it mean, epic. I'm getting chills just thinking about it. Honestly, I know it's just <laughs> it's amazing. We just have to make it happen. They're gonna gaslight the hell out of us, and I know swift boat Bernie every way they know how. But don't you think it comes down to? You know, so many people, I feel like they're just lacking empathy, you know, because it's like they're they're very entitled. I don't care about Medicare for all. It doesn't affect me. I don't care about Green New Deal. I have no kids, you know, and these right. are the attitudes. Well, what I, what I think we're up against is that they've they've convinced, you know, the Democratic Party has convinced people that Trump must be beat at all cost and therefore the most electable they've made a lot of weird arguments so their their main argument has been we need the most electable person any blue you know beat the guy so when you show them how popular bernie is and when you show them how popular these issues are whether they believe these issues or not they have been conditioned through mainstream media even msnbc that we got to get the guy to stop the villain and so at some point there might be a tipping point where their own arguments are going to work against them. And that's going to be clearly the Bernie. And when we hit that point, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what angle they take next to say, well, it's not just the most electable guy, you know? Right. I just, mm -hmm. I don't know if my fear is that is Bernie willing to go hard this time? Is he willing? Because he really, you know, he played it off so gentlemanly, regardless of what they said. Because if it were me, I would have verbally cut a bitch when it came to Hillary. I would have had her crying on the floor. And he was, like, ridiculously classy. Um, right. So I kind of wonder, is... So is I kind of think he's going to be just a little harder. I don't see him getting too far away from who he is. I think we'll hear kind of the same speeches. I don't think he's going to have a whole new rebranded Bernie 2.0. Um, but I think he'll be harder because the first time around, you know, whether we like to admit it or not, um, he was branded as a spoiler. He was concerned about being the spoiler from day one of this thing. Mm -hmm. And so he did delicately take her on he he did see that it was unrealistic in the beginning that he would actually win this thing um you know he he found out pretty early that he had a shot right uh, but he always walked the line of not wanting to really destroy her and now we're not in a position where there's there's a front runner if anything it's him so you know, the gloves will be off more than they were, but I don't see Bernie stepping out of character and being too harsh to people. Right, right. But but it is important that he does it somewhat because, like I said, the everyone's going to be on stage as a progressive. So it's really critical that he say, well, it's great that you're a progressive now. In 2014, your vote on X 
you know, he, he needs to call them out, but he, he's still going to do it in a kind way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sonia has, has a, a great, um, question and I'm not sure some of you guys may know who Jeff Weaver is. Um, he's Bernie's campaign manager of 32 years. I had him on and interviewed him and I'm a very proud independent. I love that Bernie is an independent. I wouldn't, I really want him to run independent, but I know he's not going to. Um, so Sonia wants to know what's the downside to him running as an independent? Um, cause he can't get screwed in the primaries. Well, my thoughts on that are just like, I just had Tim Canova on for the third time. He ran as an independent and they cheated the fuck out of him. Um, so I would have thought that before, uh, but also the downside to the independent is you have so many vote blue, no matter who, who, even if it's Bernie, will not vote independent. They just won't. And also he won't get to debate anyone. He won't. I mean, every single person will be on that debate stage. Everyone will be getting coverage. Everyone will have, you know, the media, but he won't. Um, so I think that's... Um, those are definitely some of the, the, the theories on why he would. Um, uh, Sonia, I believe you're right, but I, yeah, I, it has to be a certain, see, okay, here's, well, first, before I digress, Pat, what do you think about that? What are, what are your thoughts as far as why he wouldn't run Indy? I mean, I think it comes down to the potential of being a spoiler and and giving it to Trump in his mind. And now what's accurate, you know, is there a risk of him doing that? I don't know. But I think that's what it comes down to to him. He does see that it's really important to stop Trump and rightfully so. Um, sure. But yeah, they, you know, he's going to get screwed if he runs as a Democrat. He's going to get screwed as he runs as an independent. Um, but Running as a Democrat, he is getting get more coverage than if he did run independent. Um, Absolutely, and when he comes down, mm -hmm. you know, when he when he's on the debate. So here's how the first debate's going to go. Everyone's going to say a lot of dumb things. Bernie's going to say some great things. The dumb things that the people like Kamala say will be turned into sound bites and played forever. And you know, Bernie will be either ignored or they'll take something a little out of context and make it a major flub. And it'll be spun on all of mainstream media. All the think tanks will say, oh, Bernie already blew it. He's out. How can he recover from this? And then it's up to us to say, no, that's bullshit. We saw this coming. It was He was great. Here's some clips of him being great and share the hell out of everything. Yeah, absolutely. Um. So there's there's a debate right now at online and and also with some of my my you know my friends and my allies that the more people the better. I 2 years ago I would have said absolutely the more the better let's bring all of the you know all the candidates in anyone who wants to um run get in but after interviewing you know, over a hundred candidates, I can tell you that the ones who ran against like 10 people, 12 people, the max the winners were getting was like 20%. And when it comes to the primaries, you're talking delegates. So even if he'd win primaries, what's he get? Maybe one delegate? That, I mean. Well, so that that is a real issue to be concerned about. I mean, I think I think most people now understand how the delegates, superdelegates work, but there is a rule change now to where the superdelegates don't vote until a second ballot at the convention. Um, so what that means is if the first ballot, um, you know, the superdelegates and the delegates and superdelegates, well, superdelegates are out of the first ballot. The delegates are pledged to a, a candidate and they have to vote for the candidate on their first ballot. So if you come into the first first ballot at the convention, and you have three candidates that stay until the end, hypothetically. You have um, Warren, 
let's just say Warren runs on her own. And people think she might be the spoiler if they're taking this strategy on. Warren runs on her own, goes all the way to the end, even though she's in third place. Um, Bernie's in first. Uh, Biden's in second, let's say, or Kamala's in second. Doesn't matter. Point being that if three people come in to the end, nobody can secure all the delegates to win on the first ballot. Right. So what that does is it frees up all those pledge delegates to switch sides and brings in the superdelegate vote. So all of Warren's delegates, even though her supporters were largely Bernie fans, for example, and would vote for Bernie, well, these are the pledged delegates that that she that were picked by her campaign to represent her. There's nothing saying that those people have to represent the voters. They can now just, you know, hypothetically, if her delegates are actually in truth you know, going to go to Biden next or something, mm -hmm. then on the second ballot, she wins or Biden wins. Right. Absolutely. It's, it's a possible strategy. And, you know, we, we need to be aware of it. How likely it is, I don't know, but it's it's there. Yeah, the variables are just like, I feel like, do you ever see the movie Pi? Where he just yeah. does calculations in his head all day and then drills his brain out. That's kind of what I feel like when I keep thinking of all the, the you know the the possible you know ways that all of this could work out. Um, what you know? What do you think? Well, first off, I saw something that stated that there that the DNC said that there's going to be twelve debates. But they don't start till June. Right. Odd. I don't understand that either. So you want people to literally vote for months before they even see a debate. That's going to be a problem. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I haven't really put my head to, to what that means. I mean, I don't know if that if that can help us or hurt us. I'm, I'm not really sure. I mean, what are your thoughts on it? I think that they're just hoping more people drop by then, I guess. You know what I mean? Because right now they'd have to fit like 25 people on a debate stage. They'll have to do the kitty debate. Well, they've already said they're going to do it. Uh, they already have a process that's supposed to be open to the public where they pick who's on what stage together. Really? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's they, they did announce how they were going to determine that somehow. Oh man, they're gonna put oh they're gonna put Bernie against Beto. Oh man. Honestly, I, I don't care about who they have him up against. I mean, Bernie always holds his own. You just need to give him some, some TV time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What do you think about how um how uh um sorry, I was looking at a comment. How people are coming at Bernie now and saying, stop attacking Beto. Even Bernie, though Bernie has never said a single bad thing about Beto, like ever. Right. Well, this is already starting up where we left off in 2016. So on 20, in 2016, or well, 15, you know, when the primaries were going, Bernie was on TV having to apologize for everything anyone who was a surrogate's friend's cousin's uncle said. You know, it because it, it, they couldn't get him. They they couldn't smear him for things he did. So he would have to apologize for things his surrogates would say. And even when he wasn't on, the discussion on TV very often was, you know, it would be a senator unrelated to Bernie's campaign. Well, did you hear what Bernie said? You know, it would be a, a measure to repeat this this narrative of Bernie's campaign said something bad. Bernie, Bernie, uh, Bernie, what are you doing? So that's what that's what this is. It's the same thing starting early. It's gee, Bernie fans, oh, aren't they awful? The Bernie Bros, their sexism, the racism, the boy, they hate Beto. Yeah. Well, you know, that's what's also funny, like Bernie Bro, Miss Nina, you know, she <laughs> you sent her your book and a mug and she tweeted about it. Did you see that girl? Yeah, of course. I mean, I don't <laughs> know for many people, but um, 
that's pretty awesome. I mean, Nina has just the cojones. I mean, who else in the Democratic Party would have the nerve to to tweet out Peter Douche and to to share a picture of a Peter Douche mug? I mean, because she doesn't, she's not afraid of all the silly little attacks. You know, she can hold her own and and laugh about things and be a real person. Yeah. You know, people people don't want these politicians now to be Joe Bidens. They want them to have a personality and they see through all the sculpted, created, you know, figureheads that the party supports and puts out there. Absolutely. Yeah, Nina is a badass. Like she, you know, there was the one of the best times was when she was on CNN and they said, well, you said that you'll support Hillary if Bernie doesn't make it. And she goes, roll back that footage. And she like went <laughs> off. She's like, I never said that. It was awesome. So nice. she's like, when I talk about Dems, I'm talking about the Dems like in who represent people. So for her, like she is not a true, like, She's not the epitome of a dem I would insult. She's a dem that is for democracy. She is somebody who actually does like, you know, want progressive ideals and actually support changing within the party. Um, when, well, when I just want to say, was, what's that? Go on. Well, I just want to no, say ahead, she really is the heart of Bernie's movement. I mean, she, she was the president of our revolution and she travels around in the midterms. I mean, she worked her ass off and went, you know, I can't believe her schedule. I don't, I don't know if anyone has ever logged what she does, but she's just a beast out there going from city to city with our revolution, trying to get progressives elected. And, you know, that grassroots movement, our revolution is going to be great for Bernie in 2020. I mean, he's already got, so much ground support in place it's it's nuts yeah well i've met nina three times and when i think i told you this last time but i definitely see some new uh viewers um the last time i met her i told her husband you know i may be a heathen but your wife takes my ass to church and he cracked up and it was amazing and i was like but people feel that way. Like she just, she comes out and I'm like, where's the choir? Like she just gets you hype. And other than Bernie, right. who does that? I mean, I don't right. know. And, that, and that's a problem. That's why it, but that's why it has to be Bernie this time, because if it's not Bernie, whoever tries to lead the progressive movement that there, there's nobody there that can win first off, but, but who does inherit, the the mantle next i mean it, it shouldn't be one person anyway and and bernie wouldn't want it to be him anyway but we need to definitely build up some more candidates and i mean in, in part that's what our revolution's doing right yeah. um gregory brings up a good point he said i want to see nina debate mike pence dude oh, i pay to see that pay-per-view oh my god God, that'd be awesome. <laughs> she could just do it all in facial expressions. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Or Bernie, like you could tell when he would do debates with Hillary, you would see the eyes go. <laughs> he would just look down like, oh, <laughs> or he would bite the inside of his cheek. <laughs> oh, my God. What? Um. What do you have hope for? Yeah, Sonia, that's that's one of the times I was talking about at the People Summit. It was like being at a church. And then we all started chanting, run, Nina, run. <laughs> I know, I just got goosebumps. Um, but anyway, so looking towards the future in the next few months, what what do you think will happen what would you like to see happen? And then also, what do you think re realistically would happen? Well, I mean, okay. People will start trickling and announcing that they're, they're running. I think that's what's going to happen in the next few months. And it, what we have to do is ignore their narrative about, oh, we shouldn't be attacking these candidates. You, we just have to keep pointing out their records don't back off of it. I mean, this is 
this is the time to point out people's records. I mean, the Democratic Party spin forever is don't talk about Democrats, don't critique Democrats, don't, but it's a primary. We have to critique Democrats. This is the time to do it. So I know no, none, none of us are going to back down, but we need to be public and loud about it. And, you know, it don't, don't, don't buy into that you're hurting Bernie by attacking these candidates. We are progressives. We are not Bernie clones. And don't, don't back off of it like we need to fall in line and, and be gentle with our message like Bernie is. No, I can say fuck you. Bernie can't, but I can I can get in your face and say your argument is crap. I mean, I'm not Someone saying tell Sean should... King this because he just I, he's lost his damn mind. I don't I don't know what's going on. Well, I don't really want to get into that right now, but I have my thoughts on it and I hope they're not correct. Let's just leave it at that. Yeah, I I think I'm probably right there with you. Um so I'm just kind of looking over the comments quick. Um, so again, for those of you just joining, uh, Bernie did send out an email today asking for support of people who do want him to run. Um, they're starting the tax on him. They have a new um, CTR type group who is um, already throwing shit at him. So, um, if you do want him to run, donate to him tonight. Even if it's only a dollar, we just want to get the number of the people up. Um, cause that's really the most important that he knows we have his back. Um, I did a poll on Twitter that said, um, how many of you will still fight for um, Bernie as far as can uh, canvassing, phone banking, all that shit, like 10 times harder because it's going to be harder. This isn't going to be a guarantee. Like we are going to have to seriously bring this shit even harder than last time. Um, so if you guys want to comment on that poll or, you know, contribute to it, um, I'm just trying to get an idea of who's hype about this and, and how much support we're going to have. Um, but again, thank you so much, Pat. You know, I adore you. We, we did the show without any technical issues. Uh, it's a little crazy. I was expecting at least. I, know. Two we we ha I think we had like over 20 last time. You had the counter going for all the, dis the missed, uh, missed connections. Yeah. Drop so, yeah <laughs> what is your your final thought that um that you want to leave with people um okay so you you bring up third way so third way is a is a think tank that's been around for a little bit um but one of the things that they were pushing is the medicare for all alternatives and those are meant to kill Medicare for all. Don't kid yourself. People need to realize if it isn't called Medicare for all, just because it has Medicare in the title of whatever garbage name they come up with, it is not the same thing. And so I think that's their main purpose now. Uh, third way, I think they, they want to stop anyone who's going to support Medicare for all. So if their messaging is that they want to stop Medicare for all, and then they endorse Beto like they just did. That tells you about Beto. That tells you where the money is. And the corporate centrist Democrats are putting everything right now into Beto. So attack him. Attack his record at least. Attack, you know, don't let up on it. And, you know, Medicare for all is my litmus test. And yeah. I will never support a candidate that doesn't support it. And I will also never support a candidate just because they say they support it. If their track record shows that they don't, if they're backed by groups that don't want it to happen, I'm out. And we should make that message very loud and clear to them. Absolutely. I think something we all need to do more as well is I've been posting a lot about taking uh, corporate donations. If you make that your message a lot, like out of the people running, that's Bernie. Like none of them, none of those other people like, so it's kind of attacking them without having to drop their name. 
You right. know what I mean? So that way they're not going to get as um, um, defensive. But yeah, I mean, that is the biggest thing. We have to get money out of politics. Nothing will change unless and until we do. Um, so we definitely need to focus on that as well. Uh, but thank you so much, Pat. I love oh, you. You're yes, awesome. You're, you're great as well. Thank you. <laughs> Aw, uh, I'm so glad we got to do this without any interruptions. However, it was hilarious. But you guys follow Pat um, on Twitter uh, at Pat the Burner and uh, Peter Douche Liaison. Um, he's hilarious. And I very rarely fangirl, but when he said he'd come on my show, like I fangirled hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> I admit that. <laughs> well, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. I love you. And keep the ideas coming. And I'm always open to suggestions um, of topics you want to see on here or uh, people you suggest. So thanks again. Have a good night. And thank you again, Pat. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.